Preparing the Yes, that is right. I believe that I have found the worst movie to have been released in the year 2023. Now, before assuming you disagree with me, I'd like to welcome you all to the channel. And if you're returning to the channel, I would like to welcome you back. If not, this is your first time here. Welcome to the channel. I like to review movies and sometimes I do other stuff. So this is all just my opinion. I mean, what am I? I'm just a guy who sits at the computer and makes YouTube videos about movies. But after watching this movie, I believe that it is possibly the worst movie to have been released in the year 2023 with it being 2024 i think we have a full scope of everything now and now in case you didn't see the picture of the movie poster allow me to introduce you to the movie we are going to be talking about today it is talk to me talk to me was released in the us in 2023 but due to the fact that this is also an australian film it was actually released in australia in 2022 but its first sundance film festival release was in the united states in january of 2021 and its first open market u.s release date was in march 10th 2023 so we're going by america dates here baby uh, let's go and now on face value if you look at the imdb page you probably think i'm absolutely insane i mean obviously it has a 7.1 out of 10 rating and a popularity of 95 like obviously i'm the problem here right well before we go too far we'll just look at some of the top casts of the main characters and we nearly need to follow throughout this movie and just make sure we know who everyone is we have our main character mia with her friend jade and her younger brother riley and we also have a couple other side characters in Haley and joss and those are the main people we also have jade's boyfriend daniel who kind of comes in also but this is like the main group that we need to worry about but as soon as we open the movie we don't see any of them as we just see this random house party with some dude running throughout the house trying to find somebody named Duckett only for him to finally find Duckett and Duckett looks like he's gone absolutely bonkers and that's only further confirmed as Duckett proceeds to stab this man in the chest and decides to also get a bit of a closer look at the knife himself but without further ado we're now introduced to Mia as she just kind of has an absolute non-conversation with her dad we also get to see two of our other side characters here with Riley and his friend and there's an interaction that plays out between these two that I feel like is kind of the main point of this entire movie at least that's what kept coming back to me throughout this movie and it's the fact that Riley's friend offers him a cigarette and he doesn't want to take it but you can kind of tell that he kind of wants to because he wants to know what it's like and peer pressure and being cool and all that jazz but ultimately mia shows up and that also reinforces riley's idea to not do it but oh boy did they really want to show off that they got that sia copyright as they are just belting this song before they almost run over a half dead kangaroo and unfortunately mia doesn't have the heart to put down the dead kangaroo and so instead just says ah someone else will come and get it making it someone else's problem now mia shows up to jade's house after dropping off riley and jade seems like an awesome person to hang out with we also get our first look at the effects of the hand as mia sees people using the hand on snapchat because only good things can come from Snapchat. And God, Jade and Riley's mom shows up and just absolutely seems like a lovely person as she immediately begins cussing at her son. And she's even completely abrasive to the fact that she already knows that her daughter is going to try to quote unquote sneak out. So she's just like, make sure you lock the door when you come back. There's nothing like sneaking out and also taking your younger brother with you. But let's go as they're going to the party with the hand and... Jesus, Mia just seems completely socially awkward. And I mean, to be fair, I don't do parties either. I would 100% classify myself as the guy in the corner of a party, but... And let's go, it's hand time. As I say that out loud, it kind of seems a bit odd. But I've already committed to it. And it's time to whip out the hand. God, this just keeps getting worse. And who's the first person to volunteer themselves? That's right, it's Mia. And so they tie her to the chair and give her the baseline instructions of, you cannot do it for any more than 90 seconds, because if you do, then they'll want to stay. And to give you all the base instructions of how the game works, you hold the hand like you're holding someone else's hand. You say, talk to me and the spirit will appear in front of you. And it's usually just some rando spirit. And then when you say, I let you in, they will possess your body and the whole point is to 
not let it be in there for more than 90 seconds because as previously stated, then they'll want to stay in your body, kind of like an extended stay at an Airbnb. And of course, they then go into this possessed trance-like state and all this weird stuff begins to happen and Mia actually ends up fixating on Riley in particular, probably because he's the youngest one there, and of course, creepy stuff continues to happen. All with it accumulating and Mia just repeatedly shouting, run, no, 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 no. <laughs> just over and over again and it even takes three of them it takes Haley, joss and random background character to get the hand out of mia's hand after letting her go for slightly more than 90 seconds and i feel bad for riley after this because he's obviously kind of scared and traumatized and he just goes to try to sleep in his sister's room because he seems a bit freaked out and of course his sister being the loving caring sister that she is goes no get out of here so eventually riley goes to lay down with mia because she decided to stay over at their house and she's in the living room where we get a little bit more of the backstory about what happened to Mia's mom. That being she accidentally took too many sleeping pills and once everyone goes to sleep we get a KSI and Sideman cameo here so there's that I guess. Then Jade and Mia decide to approach Haley, the owner of the hand and kind of arrange for them to come over and have the hand thing at their house because I guess they're all super chill with each other now. And upon Daniel arriving to Jade's house the mom immediately starts her master manipulation and going around to everyone trying to see if she can get someone to slip up and talk about a party and of course everyone's just like there's no party i have no clue what's going on and a lot of it's kind of awkward especially when she starts talking to her daughter and mia but at the end of it it turns pretty nice and she almost just kind of seems like she's joking around with her daughter and them i mean it she clearly kind of seems like a supportive mom so i'll give her that mia even eventually asks Haley and Joss once they get to the house where they got the hand from and Joss says well it's from a psychic and Haley says it's actually a medium then Haley says it's from a satanist <laughs> and then they ask who or where they got it from and Joss is just kind of like oh from a friend of a friend who knew some guy who knew another guy and this is just kind of where everything begins to get super weird on just face value so after letting the spirit into himself, Daniel begins to act in a very, very weird way, and as all the other ones do, and they have him make out with the dog, but it's a movie. <laughs> He's just making out with the dog, haha, ha, funny, right? Until you really think about the fact that the actor really did kind of French kiss this dog. I would file for some sort of harassment from this company. <laughs> and then we have this stupid music video montage of all of them using the hand and being possessed, and. Like maybe I was the only person who was watching this the entire time that saw this and was like, this seems absolutely not fun whatsoever. This just seems like everyone is struggling and this does not look fun. But I guess since it's got a banger track behind it. <laughs> everyone's like, yeah, it's so cool. Even so much that Riley and his friends see it and they're like, oh, I want to try it. And Jade's like, no, you're not going to. Y'all are both way too young. And Mia stands up to Jade and is like, well, why don't you just let him do it for a little bit? And she's like, I'm not going to. And then eventually Jade leaves and Mia being the beacon of responsibility that she is says, oh, well, let's just let him do it for 50 seconds. And everyone's just kind of skeptical about it. And she talks to Riley for a little bit longer. And eventually Mia's just like, you know what? Let's go. Because if you're, if you have any type of supervision over young children, if they just ever ask you super nicely and seem really upset about it, that, that doesn't mean you just let them do whatever it is that they're asking you to do. Because you have to kind of set some boundaries. But I guess it just shows what kind of crappy person Mia is and allows him to do it once Jade leaves the room. And of course... When Riley does the does the hand trick, the spirit turns and looks at Mia and says, I'm so proud of you, me, which I understand. She thinks that it's her mom, which she doesn't necessarily specify anything. She just says, I'm proud of you, me. But because of that, Mia presses them to allow it to go further, which <sighs> just saying vague stuff like that should not goat you into doing this. But I mean, just just watch this, for example. Hey, John, I know you're watching this right now and I know that you're probably feeling very upset, but if you make it to the end of this video, you'll feel so much better. I promise you, John. And to 98% of you, that means absolutely nothing. 
that one person named John out there is absolutely floored right now. And because of this, this all happens, and it's obviously been more than 90 seconds, and because of that, Riley begins to beat his head into the table and try to rip his eye out, just absolutely going bananas, and Mia once again being the beacon of responsibility, just kind of zones out and walks away while everyone is left to deal with the pieces that she just left shattered. And of course with this happening, the police show up to try to see what's all going on because a young child was nearly just murdered and everyone's flipping out and forcing Mia to return home to her dad who also is just wanting to know what's going on. And she just completely disregards him and we only to see that Mia also took the hand for herself so she can use it at home because she wants to talk to her mom. But this is also a big dub because Riley's mom wants Mia nowhere near her son and that's good parenting. You don't let the person who just ruined everything come closer to your family. And of course now Mia starts seeing visions of her mom everywhere in the hospital and just begins to follow her to the bathroom only for all the lights and everything to freak out and her come running out of the bathroom and Daniel sees her and he basically offers her a ride home because it's raining and Daniel brings up that he has nowhere to stay the night because he told his parents that he was going over to his cousin's house so if he shows up back at home then the jig is up and they're gonna know that he never went to his cousin's house and Mia's like well you can stay at my house and they should not do this Daniel is dating her friend like bro there's no reason for you to stay at that house like if I'm in the same situation I am sleeping out in the rain under an overpass before I go stay at some random girl's house who I know is his friend and all, but still that's such bad optics. There's no reason why you should do that, especially when you probably know your girlfriend is already skeptical about y'all's relationship anyways due to the fact that y'all used to date each other. And due to this, we now get another super unnecessary scene in this movie where they're both laying down in the bed and they're doing the head to foot sleeping thing so that nothing weird happens. Only something weird does happen. Mia has a vision of this ghost coming in to mess with Daniel and eventually starts, let's just say, sampling the piggies as they have two separate actors pretend to suck Daniel's toes. Why? 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 Oh God! And now the spirit is manipulating Mia once again into telling her that she didn't do what she did to herself. That her mom just did it on accident. It wasn't on purpose. She would never want to leave Mia. And she starts planting seeds of doubt into Mia's fragile mind as we see Riley is still very much suffering greatly and continues to suffer more as he begins to hurt himself again and again. And I feel bad for Riley that this is happening, but the, at the same time, Homeboy didn't have to do the hand thing. This is why you never give in to peer pressure, kids. And again, they just have the actors doing super weird stuff in this movie. I just, I don't. Off. The normal reflex is to close your eyes tightly, but to remove all of the contaminated material, you need to hold your eyelids open with your thumb and index finger. Get it. And now the gang's all together again as Mia's trying to see if anybody else still sees stuff. And upon asking, we get more of an in-depth idea of where the hand came from that being from Duckett, the person in the beginning of the movie, was actually using the hand to himself earlier and that's what caused him to go absolutely bonkers. And that's where Joss got it from and he just kind of took it from Duckett. And they try to figure out what else they can do and the brother is basically no help. He just kind of says what everyone's thinking and that maybe they should stop messing with people's lives. And yes, here in this moment that I've been waiting for the entire time is when the gang flips on Mia as she tries to say well everybody ri wanted Riley to do it when Mia was the one who was mainly pushing to allow Riley to do it and so now they're going to try and have him use the hand again because maybe they forgot to close the portal last time and this only ends up with Mia using the hand instead of Riley and tries to call out to Riley but instead she sees a little girl and the little girl tells Mia that she'll let her in instead of Mia letting the girl in and in doing so Mia sees all these horrific images of what they're doing to Riley and god it only makes me dislike Mia more to know that she's the reason that this is happening to Riley. And now she returns home after that traumatic experience and we see the one character that I really empathize in this movie and that's her father Max as he opens up to his daughter with the end of life note that the mother left and I just feel so bad for the father because not only did he lose his wife but his daughter is also a pretty crappy person and at the same time is 
absolutely losing it. And like a totally normally adjusted person, Mia then begins to say, nope, she didn't do it because she told me she didn't do it. You know how ridiculous that sounds? Yes, I'm sure your dead mother told you that she didn't do it on purpose because she's dead. And of course now the spirits begin to manipulate Mia again because she is very, very manipulatable to where she even thinks that that's not her dad out there who's banging on the door, which it's not. It's just another spirit as we see that the dad is still sitting in the living room as he starts going through a bag because he's probably worried that she's on massive amounts of drugs because she definitely seems like she is on massive amounts of drugs only for the spirit to end up breaking into Mia's room and start attacking her and of course being very reminiscent to what happened with his wife the father Max then begins to try to bust down the door because he can hear his daughter is struggling from inside the room and he manages to break down the door and rushes over to his daughter's side to try to help her only for her to stab him in the neck because she is once again a terrible person. And now Mia begins to formulate her greatest plan where she calls Jade over to her house only for her to instead go to the hospital because you guessed it she's going to try to kill Riley because now whenever she looks at Riley she sees the body of whatever it is that's trying to possess him and not actually Riley. But due to the fact that Jade is also at Mia's house she sees what she did to her dad and immediately sets off her alarm bells as she tries to get help from Mia's dad by calling an ambulance and she rushes back to the hospital only to see that Mia has now put Riley in a wheelchair and is walking him towards the nearest highway and I bring up this statement because it is super easy to just remove people from a hospital or walk around aimlessly in a hospital without anybody stopping you or anything being seen on camera like I guess if I just walk to the nearest ER center here, I can just start walking into patients' bedrooms and nobody's going to stop me. I can even take one out in a wheelchair and take them to go get ice cream and nobody will be the wiser. Or maybe this is just an Australia thing, I don't know. But we get to the point where Mia finally gets the wheelchair all the way up to the side of the road just as Jade is running to try to stop her and of course Mia's mother comes back to her and tells her oh just finish the job push them into the road and let it all be over and yep they end up in the road and end up getting hit by a car but it's not Riley it's Mia let's go big dubs but it's fine because Mia gets up as she starts walking around only for her to be teleported into the hospital and begins walking around aimlessly in the hospital only to realize basically that she is no more and the movie ends with her walking up to a hand with a lit candle only to realize that she is now the spirit that other people are communicating with and there it is the movie has come full circle and that is talk to me and now it's review time so i know this is probably the moment that you've all been waiting for and this is where i'm really going to go in on this movie this is my review section where i give my full thoughts and opinions on the movie after fully explaining it to everybody else for those of you who have not seen my rating system it is very simple it's on a scale of 10 it has four main categories there is plot which can get anywhere from zero to three acting and cinema which are same zero to three and then we have a bonus point where it can get anything from the full bonus point to half a bonus point to whatever I feel like a bonus point that once you add it all together meaning that it can all combine for a complete total of 10 seems easy enough but to get right on into it for the plot I gave it a 1.5 out of 3 and the only reason it got a 1.5 out of 3 on the plot is because if you dumb it down to its very basic center and look at it just from where this movie could have started from where you have a hand that allows you to talk to the dead and then the spirits kind of start coming back and tormenting you or messing with you like that seems on its surface to be a good idea i just feel like the plot of it in general just it makes it hard to actually care about very many of these characters so this is something that i feel like has happened a lot recently in not only movies but tv shows and everything across the board is for some reason they've started making these productions where the main character is not very sympathetic at all and if you want to make a good movie you have to make the viewers care for who it is that they're looking at if i don't care about the main character why should i care for the rest of the story and that's where i saw myself hitting in this movie is there wasn't an ounce of me that felt bad for mia because mia was basically inflicting this pain and torture on her friend's family because she didn't have the ability to deal with it 
internally and that's just something that i didn't exactly like i found myself rooting for her to lose basically like when i had to go over this entire plot and figure out what my favorite parts of the movie were it was a really hard decision between the end credits and the part where mia gets hit by a car because throughout the entire movie i don't feel sympathetic for mia i don't want mia to succeed mia is the reason that riley's in this situation Mia is the reason that everything's happening to this family. Mia is the reason that all this is going on because she couldn't control her own emotions. Like, why should I care about her? And that really brings the plot down a lot because how am I supposed to be engaged with this movie and want to see the finality of this movie if I don't care what happens to the main character? I just feel like that's something that happens a lot with movies where very recently especially that there's not very many sympathetic characters and you're just like forget it let them all perish i don't care <laughs> so for the plot it gets the 1.5 out of the three for acting i gave it the zero this also happens to play in with the fact that none of the characters are super sympathetic like as previously stated the one character that i felt any bit of empathy for was the father because he lost his wife, his daughter is going crazy, and he's just trying to do his best to keep his family together. That's the only character in this that I felt a little bit of sympathy for. Like, I, I felt the most amount of empathy for the father, don't get me wrong. The second most was maybe Riley, but even then, he was also in that situation because of his own negligence as a child but still it's it's one of those things where I don't care much for the characters and there were moments in this movie especially when Riley and his friend were talking towards the beginning of the movie where I felt like the conversation was super choppy and super awkward the way that I described it was if aliens came down to earth and they wanted to know about our species and some person came up to them and explained to them what a normal human conversation was and had the aliens reenacted to us that's kind of what a lot of the interactions in this movie felt like was just people who don't know what conversations are trying to do those conversations. So for that, the acting really made it hard to sit there and watch, especially when they had some of the some of the actors kiss dogs and eat toes. And it's just you didn't have to make them do that, but you did. So it gets zero for me for the cinema. It gets only half a point. Yeah, it had a good budget, so a lot of the shots look nice because they have nice cameras, but the oversaturation of hip hop music and popular culture music and just all this stuff that's just being forced into this movie reminds me of this Gordon Ramsay quote that was either on Hell's Kitchen or Kitchen Nightmares where somebody brings a dish out to him and it's a standard like steak dish, but the thing is that the whole plate is like drizzled with chocolate and it's supposed to make it look nice and Gordon Ramsay brings this up he goes I hate it whenever I see a dish brought out to me that looks like this because it shows insecurity in the chef's ability to present the flavor that he wants with the main dish and that's what I feel like whenever you put these banger musics into it when you go and get the copyright to have this Sia song in it you go and do all these things to inundate this movie with this music and try to make it entertaining to listen to you're putting all this drizzle around this movie because it doesn't make it feel like it could stand on its own i'd rather have a movie with absolutely no music and just having like background subtle sounds to help set moods rather than just throwing in a popular song over the movie to make it seem more appealing so that's why for cinema even though it's more like visual i'm also incorporating the audio into it just because i feel like it's something that really hurts this movie also and then for the bonus point i'm sure y'all have already guessed it i'm not giving it a bonus point there's nothing in this movie that i saw and was like yeah that's that's super good or there's nothing that really stood out to me in this movie the closest thing is they did a good job with the visual effects on the characters but there's just everything else just takes so far away from this movie that it's so hard to just sit here and enjoy it and to come away from it being like man i want to watch that movie again there's just like i said i'm maybe i'm in the minority here because the imdb page has a 7.1 out of 10 and i'm about to walk out of here with absolutely nothing close to that but that's why it doesn't get the bonus point for me so now for the final score, I know some of y'all may not want to add up for it, and I'm not a mathematician either, but this one's pretty easy. It's 1.5 plus 5 plus 0.5. So my final score is a 2 out of 10, which is in stark contrast to what the original IMDb rating is. 
I know a lot of y'all probably disagree with me. Maybe some of y'all watch this movie and it's like, yeah, it's a really good movie. But man, I, I almost started watching this movie on two times speed because I just wanted this thing to be over with. I just, the main thing for me in a movie is you got to have a, a sympathetic main character. You have to have a main character that people care about. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm soulless and heartless and I don't care enough about people, but I just... I did not come away from this movie wanting very many people to succeed and throughout the movie the main character was just getting worse and worse and worse in my eyes so I just it makes it really hard for me to try to enjoy a movie where I don't care about the characters but that's my own personal opinion just a quick overview I gave it a 2 out of 10 IMDB 7.1 out of 10 but that's my review on talk to me if you felt like I was completely wrong and this is the greatest movie you've ever seen in your eyes let me know. Make sure to leave an 18 page comment down in the comments below. I would love to hear everybody else's opinion on this. I'm not here to sit and tell you that you're not valid for liking this movie. This is just my opinion. But if you'd like to let me know that you like this movie or maybe you agree with me, maybe you thought this movie wasn't good either. Just let me know in the comments below. I'd I always enjoy hearing other people's opinion. If you have any suggestions on another movie for me to do, also leave it in the comments below this was also a suggestion i also have other suggestions that i need to get through so if i start getting more it might take a little bit longer but always leave any suggestions you want if there's a movie you want me to review but that's all for this movie if you want to go watch it go watch and i'm never going to tell you not to watch a movie i'm just going to tell you what i feel about it so once again thank you all for stopping by thank you for coming by and listening to the video watching the video if you enjoyed this please leave a like if you want more you can always subscribe. I'm trying to make more videos like this. I'm trying to work with my schedule to get more out, but I very much appreciate anybody who's come by to stop and listen. I'm almost to 500 subscribers. Let's go. That's super cool. But thank you once again for all y'all being here. Just like I said, let me know what you thought about it. And until next time, I'll see you in the next one.